Hello YouTube, this is Noah, and today I'm doing the follow-up video of the one that I made, uh, or that I should say, that I uploaded last to my channel, and that video was the Behringer UMC 204 HD audio interface. I promised in that video that there would be a follow-up video with my new microphone, and today is going to be the great reveal. So, I actually purchased a AT2035 microphone. So this microphone is made by Audio Technica. Um, ever since I got my headphones with them, I had been hearing like a whole other side of sound. Like I don't want to sound cliche or over exaggerate, but seriously, those headphones have really opened up sound for me on the computer. And I kind of wanted to give back to you guys for um, subscribing. This mic is kind of a result of my 1,000 subscriber special. In that video, I said that I would be getting new equipment for my channel and there'd be big changes coming. This is the first of which is coming to my channel. So this microphone is the kind of big brother to the AT2020, which a lot of you may be familiar with if you're into um, microphones in general. So the key differences between this one and the AT2020, for those that are wondering, uh, is this one is capable of a 10 decibel filter for the audio, so if it's like really loud in the area you're recording, you can switch on that 10 decibel pad and it will kind of dampen the audio a little bit. And it also has a 80 hertz cutoff, and that cutoff is used for um, eliminating low frequency noises, um, such as buzzing and humming that are, that pick up on other microphones but are kind of hard for um, humans to hear. But they will, um, this microphone will eliminate those because of the 80 hertz cutoff. Anything below 80 hertz will not even be picked up by the microphone in recording. And this is an XLR mic as opposed to a USB mic. My current one, which is the Blue Snowball, which is actually on its last leg, is uh, being replaced by this one. And I, um, I'm kind of glad that I got it at the time I did because my last video I had to use my camera audio rather than the Blue Snowball because the Blue Snowball was giving a terrible hissing noise. Uh, I think it's a result of the port in the back just becoming weak over time after tons and tons of uh, plugging and unplugging in the cable for the back. So I'm kind of glad I got my um, 2035 when I did. But I've talked for a lot and not shown that much at all, so let me get right into it. So I don't know if you can see there. We have the microphone, the shock mount, and a carrying pouch. This is another key difference that the um, 2035 has over the 2020. The 2020 just has a simple mount that screws onto any stand, whereas this one has an actual fully fledged shock mount, which is really good for limiting vibrations in your desk or um, you know stuff caused by like fans or other things that may be shaking your microphone a little bit. So this would eliminate sounds occurring from that. So that's gonna be really helpful to eliminate my computer's fans um, rattling the desk and any kind of movement I make on the desk won't interfere with the mic nearly as much as it would with the Blue Snowball. And um, that's the other big thing. The shock mount by itself is $50. And when you compare the price of this microphone to the 2020, it's a little brother, you can find that the uh, price difference is 50 bucks. So you're essentially paying $50 more for a shock mount along with the um, 80 hertz cutoff and the 10 decibel pad, which is a good investment in my opinion. All right, so inside the box here, we have a piece of plastic and in there, is a really really protective foam like this stuff's legit and it is en encompassing the microphone itself this was a lot heavier than I expected it to be but in the back here you can see that cutoff and you can also see the 10 decibel pad which these switches are really stiff actually just trying them out right now but um, I will grab my scale and we can take a measurement of this so you can get an idea of how heavy it is if you're planning on mounting it to a stand of some sort. All right, so right here, if it's not gonna roll on me, it is. It looks like the mic weighs about 405 grams. Um, at least that's the measurement I'm getting from when I'm not touching it because it's uh, you know cylindrical, it wants to roll. So let's turn that off now. But it's actually a lighter than I um, lighter than I thought, but it just happens to feel heavy. I don't know how that is. I expected it to be uh, a little heavier, but 
apparently the numbers set, tell me it's lighter than I expected, so that's great because the mount I have it on is a scissor mount, and if it's too heavy, it will sag. So I think this is lighter than the blue snowball that I have, so I don't think there should be as much sag as that causes, and that doesn't cause that much sag to begin with. But inside that bag here we have user manuals, so uh, it looks like purchase registration card, the usual kind of stuff, not going to go over in too much details about that. And to get this box out of the way, I'm going to take the last thing out of it, and that is this carrying case here. Uh, the only other thing in the box is the cardboard inlet here and this packaging foam. So I'll move this out of the way now. But here we have a carrying pouch. This can be used for your Audio-Technica once you remove the shock mount here. The Audio-Technica AT2035, I guess. I just called it the Audio-Technica. But it's a pretty nice padded um, little bag for it, so that's going to be really protective for transport, uh, which is a good thing. So the shock mount here, I forget what size that is, but it's um, a standard size for like most standing mount mounts for the uh, for microphones, and then it has a step down adapter. This is also a size I'm not sure of, but um, this is the size that my uh, scissor mount actually uses, and it does come with the adapter, but I am going to be using the adapter that my scissor mount came with, just because um, I can't get it off. I think that I screwed it on so tight before with my other mic that the, um, the two pieces of metal are just extremely tight. I tried everything and I cannot seem to get them off. So I will just be using the adapter that came with my scissor mount rather than my Audio-Technica. Okay. All right, nice in there. And then to kind of like adjust the angle that the uh, shock mount is at, you can loosen the screw here. But let's see, it looks like it could go either way actually. I don't think there's a difference. But because the plastic looks like it has the molds on the bottom, I'm going to keep it so that it's like that holding the mic. So you can just slide the mic in here, and it actually is kind of snug, so I guess, I guess that's a good thing as well. So we'll just get that in there. And the XLR male output is at the bottom of the mic here. I did just notice, however, being inside the shock mount prevents you from accessing the controls. Maybe not. So if you kind of push it down just a little bit and you know finesse it into the right angle, you can have it so that it shows the Audio-Technica logo as well as has access to the switches at the bottom of the shock mount here. So um, I'll probably keep it just like this. But there is a little bit of a lip on the microphone itself so it won't uh, slide too far. In fact, that lip might be able to be used for the shock mount itself. Let's see. Yeah, it doesn't feel like the shock mount can move anymore. But yeah, it holds it pretty sturdy, I'd say. It's not coming off very easily. So I am going to affix that to my um, scissor mount right now. All right, so we got the mic mounted, as you can see here in the video. Um, there was a few things that are uh, not really concerns, but just something you should be aware of. The XLR cable, the way this mic is designed, it kind of, um, well, it kind of protrudes really far out of the base of the microphone. I think a possible improvement to the microphone would have like the XLR recessed into the mic. I'm not sure if that's possible just the way this mic's designed, but um, that would just make more sense from a design standpoint. But uh, there's nothing I can really change about my mic to, a to uh, you know, accommodate that. But the, um, the actual um, mount here is very high quality. It keeps the mic, you know, perfect. Uh, it, it doesn't let the mic vibrate just the way it's designed. And um, this is kind of also a good design standpoint from a scissor mount. It actually, uh, I think it accommodates the microphone better than my um, Blue Snowball because I, th I think the Blue Snowball is heavier than this microphone, but uh, it, just, it just doesn't look like it. <laughs> this one is all metal though, like you can tell it is a much higher construction quality than the Blue Snowball. Not to trash the Blue Snowball or anything, but um, for like my first XLR mic, this is just 
an amazing feeling mic, so I'm excited to hear how it sounds here in a minute. And then I do have my pop filter mounted to the back here so I can pull that over the mic when I'm using it for my videos so that you don't get that ugly popping noises um, for my speech. So yeah, let's, let's uh, get into a direct comparison here so that you guys can hear exactly the difference between the Blue Snowball and the Audio-Technica. And to be fair here, I will be comparing both without a pop filter and I will be speaking about an inch or two away from each microphone so you can get a direct comparison. I will be comparing the Blue Snowball first and the Audio-Technica microphone second. This is a test of my Blue Snowball microphone. I have had this microphone and have been using it on my channel for the past three years. Now I am using the Audio-Technica 2035. I am using it with the Behringer UMC 204 HD audio interface. Right now, it is currently on the 80 Hz cutoff, along with no pad on either the microphone or the audio interface. Alright, so that concludes our test here. The rest of the audio in this video, from the point where I switched to the AT2035 in the test, is going to be recording on the AT2035. So, the audio you're listening to right now is from the 2035 and the Behringer combo. So I hope you can hear the difference between this audio and the audio at the beginning of the video. Feel free to go back and forth between the beginning and this part of the video to compare it. Um, the things that I noticed right away were there is way less background noise. Noises from my computer were picked up by the Blue Snowball, and now they're absolutely silent by, uh, when picked up by the AT2035. Clicks from my keyboard are now much less noticeable. Um, I normally would edit them out or would have them in a part of the video where you wouldn't hear in um, my videos, but for um, whenever I play and pause the video, I use the space bar, and that would make a lot of noise, and I would hear that even though I'd edit it out, and it sounds much um, quieter on the AT2035. This is literally just picking up what's right in front of it using the cardioid pattern um, in the microphone. So... I would overall say I'm happy with my purchase. The audio upgrade is um, immense compared to what I had on my other microphone, and I hope that you guys enjoy it as much as I do. The idea is that in the future, my videos are going to be recorded with this microphone, um, at least for the, a great time being from now. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video or found it educational. Um, maybe it's going to be the deciding factor on whether you purchase this microphone or not. Um, I, I do want to hear your opinions, though. What do you think about my audio? Do you think it's better than the Blue Snowball? I would hope so, considering I just spent 200 bucks on this setup. And, uh, yeah, just have, if you have any questions, please do leave them down in the comments section. I will try to answer as many questions as I see. Um, and if you like this video, please do subscribe to my channel, because you will find other videos like this one there. So uh, that's going to wrap, about wrap it up for today. Thank you all for watching, and this has been my Audio-Technica AT2035 review. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.